Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The number of current positive COVID-19 cases in the Cenomite remains at zero. Also tonight, an expenditure plan is in place for the millions of dollars received in coronavirus relief funds. And getting groceries just became a lot easier in the Cenomite. We have the details. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects, and I don't have to get out on the car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag. Like before, it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes, and I have to hang up and then call her back, and now I don't do that. You know what's a good thing too is that when you come over to visit, I could give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour, so that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. Off a day to Rwami and good evening Commonwealth. Today is Monday, May 4th, 2020. The mass community-based testing at the Saipan International Airport is continuing to show negative COVID-19 results. The CNMI remains at zero positive cases of COVID-19 at this time. As of today, May 4th, 1,335 individuals have been tested through the community-based drive through initiative at the Saipan International Airport. Yesterday alone was over, almost 400 people were, were tested. I mean, were swabbed, you know, where we collected the specimen. And, and so far there's 1,022 that came back negative. Um, there's no positive. With 313 specimens still pending results. Munya says if a specimen were to come back positive, the individual will immediately go into quarantine at Kanoa Resort. We're, we're doing the community-based testing to try to figure out, you know, is there somebody out there that is that is not, uh, you know, reporting to the to the hospital. Um, usually, we, you know, if you have symptoms, obviously you call. You, you know, we've always said that you call first and making sure that the provider is well aware that you're coming, and then you know, we'll, we'll try to, you know, we will process you as a as a patient. Um, we haven't seen uh, lately anyone that has come in saying that I have these symptoms and I. I feel, you know, I think I have COVID-19. So, um, so what does that mean? And, you know, having a community-based testing is, is helpful for us at least to, to figure, you know, to find out exactly what's out in our community. United Airlines resumed flights between Guam and Saipan over the weekend with 27 arriving passengers. Munya says the 14-day quarantine still applies to arriving passengers, but they have the option to be tested and released if the results come back negative. 
We have the quarantine uh, requirement. So if you're coming, you know, to the CNMI, we will put you up in a, in a quarantine area. Um, you can you can be removed, and and this there's no exemptions. Okay, I just want to make that clear. You know, you go through this process just like everyone else. Um, we we advise people if you don't want to be quarantined and you have you within the last 72 hours you've been tested. Yes, you can avoid the quarantine, and that's the only way probably you'll ever you know uh, other than than being tested here. So if you don't have that test before you leave your uh, wherever you're departing from, and when you arrive here in this, on, on Saipan, what we will do is then we will offer you the option. Um, again, it's an option. You can stay in quarantine for 14 days, or you, if you choose to do so, you can actually, um, you know, do the um, get tested. And if if it comes back uh, negative, then you know, we'll set you, we'll set you free. <laughs> but Munoz says there is still a requirement for those who test negative and get released from quarantine. Whether you are, you know, whether you got tested in, in the mainland or anywhere else, or you're tested here, we will require that you enroll in our monitoring system. Um, so that monitoring system, um, number one, keeps you in our system that you have been, you have recently traveled. We have, uh, we also have a record of of your daily, uh, you know, check check in of, um, you know, how you doing. Um, if if you're coughing or any of the symptoms that, that are basically, and there's new symptoms that are are linked to COVID nineteen. So we want to make sure that those things, um, we have that record with us so that we can continue to track you, um, you know, until the 14 days have expired. She says out of the 27 that arrived, some came with documentation showing they got tested in the last 72 hours and are negative for COVID-19. Some got tested when they arrived off the flight and four individuals chose not to be tested for COVID-19 and remain in quarantine at Kanoa Resort. Negative results for those that were tested. It came back yesterday, and and we released today. Um, and the the ones that um, so there are, so it's down to four from uh, Saturday's uh, Saturday's arrival. There were only four that uh, basically who opted not to be tested. She says drive-through testing is a timely process, and that the equipment being used gives valid results. I'm going back to the question of, you know, how is that, you know, when you're comparing an FDA equipment to a non-FDA equipment, um, at the end of the day, you know, um, the process itself ends at the the, uh, hands of the pathologist, who who the doctor that says, yes, this test is valid, this test uh, result, this, these results are valid and, and, and signs off on it. So, you know, um, Let's, you know, th- that's one of the my answers for those that, that think that this, you know, this is a concern that is a non-FDA equipment. You have to be mindful that the people that are involved are all are all professionals and um, they're doing this in the right way um, and putting them, you know, their license there to make sure that that's what they're doing is what is what's uh, uh, acceptable. Plans are in place for community-based testing to begin on Tinian and Rhoda next week, according to Munya. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. The CNMI has received $36 million in coronavirus relief funds from the CARES Act, and an expenditure plan is now in place for how the money will be used. This $36 million is part of the CARES Act funding for COVID-19 operations. Um, Pretty much it's a funding source that's uh, given to the state's territorial, local, and tribal governments. Uh, and this is funds that will uh, cover the cost of any expenses with the public health emergency and uh, costs that are not um, accounted for in your current budget. So we can't pay for anything that is normal government operations. It has to be strictly specific to the COVID-19 operation. So I know you guys have the expenditure plan. So you guys have broken down what areas um, each, per, I guess, each amount will go to. Can you, I guess, tell me about each area and how much? The, we, we budgeted $11 million for the procurement of uh, test kits and PPE equipment. Uh, this is for uh, for the hospital, this is for the quarantine sites. These are also for the uh, alternate medical sites, including um, the um, treatment center at the parking lot at uh, 
DHCC as well as Kanoa Resort. Um, we we purchased uh, six um, six point four million dollars is budgeted for equipment that are considered a fixed asset, where there are equipments that we need to uh, that are over five thousand dollars, and um, we need to monitor the the um, equipment in terms of inventory. These are like ventilators, um, any x-ray machines, any um, high ticket items. Uh, we, we budgeted $6.4 million for that. Uh, that includes also hospital beds that we purchased for the alternate sites um, and funding available for if we need to buy more or replace and help with these uh, current um, rooms and the availability of their or equipment in their hospital. We uh, also budgeted about $6 million for uh, professional services. We have uh, engineers monitoring like HVAC systems at the hotels that we're at. Um, any upgrades that we need to do to help with uh, CHCC. Uh, we also um, budgeted funds for if we need to hire in and bring in medical staff, that we have some funding availability to help pay for that. Um, we budgeted about $10 million for payroll expense. This is for um, first responders and uh, support staff, ancillary support staff that are not at the hot zone or not at the quarantine or public health. This is monies that go to help support the uh, mitigation and uh, response to this COVID-19. Um, this will pay for uh, the hazardous pay and, 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 and uh, overtime that our first responders uh, could avail to. We also budgeted um, um, about $200,000 for um, rental equipment. You know, a lot of the uh, sites, even at the CHCC and, and the two hotels, we have like uh, tent rentals and um, we've rented, uh, in some cases, rented some vehicles or um, whatever we needed for the response and for the staff support, uh, support staff needs to be at those sites. So um, we have a budget plan, an implementation plan for this money. We need to, we're monitoring every expenditure we're making sure that we're accountable for this because we don't want to come back a couple years later and have to um, be audited and not and have to return these monies back. Um, there's no way the Sino my government can afford that um, to pay back, especially when we're still uh, trying to struggle to keep current operations. I mean, um, what about the money for the stimulus check? So we still have not received that funding, correct, for the stimulus checks? That's correct. Uh, the stimulus checks are um, a separate program of the CARES Act. And this is a separate funding source that comes from the IRS. And the way the uh, IRS has treated the stimulus checks for the territories is quite different than as we hear in the news, the national news media, um, you know, residents and uh, individuals getting their their uh, stimulus already. Um, we were informed that we will be getting ours in May and we're doing our best to be ready to go. So as soon as those monies come, we can release those funds to our people who really, really need this funding, uh, need this stimulus checks for their family. Is there anything else you want to say or tell me about um, the money we receive? I just want to just add that I want the, um, the community and the public know that we are doing our best. We're working with our federal partners um, and we're working, Department of Labor is working with the United States Department of Labor. Um, my staff and I were working with the IRS and the US Treasury uh, to speed up and, and bring these monies into our community as soon as possible. Please be patient. The monies are coming uh, and as soon as we get it, we'll be released back as soon as we can, to avail to everyone. Curfew hours for the CMI have been amended. Here are the details. 
Effective May 1st, under the second amended executive order by Governor Ralph Torres, the reduced curfew hours are now from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Any adult or minor found loitering or present outside of those hours on the islands of Saipan, Tinian, and Rota will be subject to penalties and fines. A release from the governor's COVID-19 task force states the reduction in curfew hours is due to the community's cooperation in following curfew and refraining from social gatherings. Governor Torres ordered a 7 p.m. curfew for adults and minors at the beginning of April due to positive cases of COVID-19 in the CNMI. Getting groceries is a bit easier now with an order online process. It's called online grocery shopping, and now Saipan has that option. For those of you that want to limit your public interaction to the bare minimum, you can now do so by ordering your groceries on the internet. It's something that the, you know has been going on in the states with Instacart and, and other places like that. Um, so it's something we we looked into uh, previously to the COVID crisis, but um, it's something we really pushed. Our IT department um, has worked really hard to get this thing thrown together, and really about four weeks time. So uh, all the coding, all the building of the website, everything was done. Um, here on Saipan, Philippines, Guam, it's a team effort, uh, but the, the goal is, yeah, to be able to limit the amount of people that come in the store. The process is simple. Just visit PaylessSuperFresh.com, add the desired grocery items to your cart, press checkout, and a Payless Super Fresh representative will call you to process your payment over the phone. Then the customer will have the option of either curbside pickup or delivery to their home. So basically, we'll, we'll take credit card information when the, um, one of our customer service reps will call. Um, we'll, we'll get all that information, and then we'll finalize the transaction either upon delivery or upon pickup. Uh, they're actually working on these stalls right now for the pickup location uh, right outside the, the uh, front doors so that we can you know, make that process as quick, and, quick as possible. But Carico says not all grocery items are available for online order. Uh, right now, it's a limited selection of items kind of took our top basically like 7,500 items and loaded that up, but we will be adding um, eventually every grocery item that we carry in the store. There is a $30 minimum per purchase and a $5 delivery fee. Anything before 5 p.m. Um, will be delivered uh, tomorrow or uh, could be uh, set up as early as today for pickup. Um, so one, like I said, once we get the email um, notification for confirmation, We'll, we'll give them a call based on the phone number. Um, if it's, you know, the one thing, the tricky part with, uh, you know, Saipan is there's no addresses. So um, we have to be able to find your location either with a pin, you know, Google map pin drop or, um, you know, very specific directions so that we can make sure to, to get things to you. But our delivery drivers um, from, are from wholesale. They've been delivering for a long time here. So it uh, shouldn't be too difficult to, for most people. Um, and then, yeah, we're just, you know, trying to basically once you, Hit accept, we call, uh, we'll set up a time for pickup or a time for uh, delivery. And you know, when you get here, call the store and we'll bring your groceries right out to you. Carico does ask for the community's patience as the kinks are ironed out, hoping to add more items to the inventory later down the road. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. The Supreme Court has issued its opinion in Commonwealth versus Ambrosio Agumoro. According to a release from the Supreme Court, the jury conviction of theft by deception was affirmed in the Supreme Court opinion, but reversed Agumoro's conviction of misconduct in public office. When Agumoro was the deputy commission of the Department of Public Safety, the trial court found that he had deceived DPS by allowing a DPS vehicle to be surveyed and scrapped when the vehicle had greater value. He was sentenced to six years of imprisonment, all suspended, and was placed on probation, where he had to pay $2,500 in restitution, write an apology letter to the public, and was banned from government employment for 10 years. The court found there was sufficient evidence for his conviction of theft by deception. Agomoro's misconduct in public office was reversed by the court, though, and the court remanded the case for resentencing. For those who have recently expired driver's license or expired vehicle registration, an extension has been given. 
According to the Department of Public Safety Bureau of Motor Vehicles, an expired driver's license has 30 working days after an expiration before a $20 penalty fee is owed. An expired vehicle registration has a grace period of 10 days after the expiration before a $30 fee is owed. But on March 16, 2020, the Sinemai BMV was temporarily closed due to COVID-19 concerns and has not been reopened. Those who have recent expired driver's license and vehicle registration will be granted a waiver without penalty until the BMV reopens. A release from DPS states an announcement will be sent out to the public once BMV office is scheduled to reopen. DPS states officers are aware of the extension and ask motorists to notify their insurance providers. Coming up, we pay respect to the Marianas Variety founder. More after the break. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Winigi PHI Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Ihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. Nere eyor sumaye uhalweres ren, kuchu weyor safeye emwal ebalisiu klalyam weres. Inumina ninyong gamot. Ayon sa inyoriseta ng inyong doktor at alinsunod sa bili ng inyong pharmaceutical. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Marianas Variety founder, Abid Yunus, passed away at the age of 83. His memorial was held over the weekend. Mariah came from a family of farmers, passed on from his father. My siblings and I played and worked on the farm every day, and we were nourished by it. There he taught us the many values of hard work, sustainability, and health. Through it all, the one constant was his pride in Palestinian food. He would boast for hours while cooking about all the benefits of his cuisine and how his family made the best of their farm. His dream was to open a restaurant on the island. Just by spending time with him in the fields and in the kitchen, he taught me so much. <clears throat> Little did I know at the time that I would end up taking his passions and continue, continuing his farm and restaurant. Frankly, my father and I are completely opposites in so many ways. And I thought that we would only share the same name. But now I know for sure that we share the same passion for farming and Palestinian food. We never expected or planned for this to happen. But it is the greatest gift I have ever received. And I will continue his legacy. 
I miss my father. I miss the quiet days and evenings at home with him where he would share his joys, passions, childhood stories, his artistic talent, and how much he loved each of his children and how he wanted the best for all of us. Our fathers and caregivers, Nani Onhanje, Conrad Polito, Benita Rosario, the most especially our wonderful Ligaya, Ida Davenport, for helping to take wonderful care of our father, and to all our business partners, families, relatives, and friends for lifting our spirits and our hearts in this most difficult time. In his mementos, we share a quote from one of my father's favorite people, a fellow artist, Walt Disney. As it fits a man who loves to laugh, who has the greatest imagination, and who constantly dreams to make things better, he said, laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, and dreams are forever. We miss you. We miss you, Dad. We love you. Ma salama. Adios and farewell. Dad, I promise to always water the plants and not burn the pita bread. I love you. Maha salama, shukran, aben kanti. On Guam, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's Chief of Staff has resigned. KUAM has the details. Hafede, here's your Guam news update. The Governor's Chief of Staff, Tony Babauta, has resigned. He was at the center of a controversy after a supposed one-night stay at the Pacific Star Resort. Here's more. 24 hours after the media muted for not playing by Adeloupe's rules. Okay, Adriana, as I said, we made it very clear that your questions need to stay relevant to the topic at hand and calls for transparency by various sectors of the community. Any questions the, the news wants, they should be able to get an answer. That, that should have been very simple. That's a straightforward question. If you have nothing to hide, you can just answer that question. There's no need to cut, cut the, the reporter off and then, you know, and then all those, um, those um, uh, Zoom videos, she has the mute button. She doesn't let people talk. On Thursday, KUAM and other local media continued to press the governor about why Tony Babauta was allowed to stay at the government's quarantine facility at the Pacific Star. How long was he allowed to stay? Was he tested for COVID-19? And what is the governor's response for those who might find it questionable? A question was also asked about the status of federal assistance. But if questions weren't about the governor's recovery plan, media was censored. Jasmine, I made it very clear that we're going to stick with the COVID recovery efforts. Meanwhile, Carrera confirms other government staff were also allowed to spend nights at the hotel. She says the quarantine facility is managed on a 24-7 basis, with two to three staffers working the site at any given point during the 24-7 period, and are provided a room to rest. No press conference was held today, but Adeloup said Tony about to resign for personal reasons. The governor thanked him for all his hard work and announced her deputy, John Jr. Calvo, will take over the position in an acting capacity. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. For more, check out Facebook. We're at KUM News. Coming up after the break is your KSPN2 weather report.
Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects, and I don't have to get out of my car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag. Like before, it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes, and I have to hang up and then call her back, and now I don't do that. You know what's a good thing too is that when you come over to visit, I can give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour. So that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. Here is your weather. Today we had a high of 90, a low of 77, 62% humidity. Tomorrow, partly sunny with isolated showers. East winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow will have a high of 88, low of 78. Seas 4 to 6 feet. High tide at 5.47 a.m., low tide at 12.18 p.m. Sunrise is at 5.52 a.m. and sunset is at 6.36 p.m. Thank you for watching this Monday edition of KSPN2 News. Have a great rest of your evening.